that time and so what they may do is push this child to the side or if the child comes and say look daddy i made the honor roll it may not be a big deal to that father or if that child comes and say um or if the child goes in the hospital for something serious the father may not see it serious and so that child may constantly find herself making herself sick or getting hurt on purpose trying to get that daddy's attention but the child does not understand that daddy can't help you because daddy needs help himself because he's mentally ill and that's hard that's a lot for a young child to take on that responsibility of my daddy is mentally ill that is a whole lot and when you're talking about narcissistic personality disorder you're talking about someone who will hurt your feelings on purpose because it makes them feel good. And you're talking about someone who will project themselves onto you and make you feel bad about every good thing that you do. And these people will make you feel like you aren't good enough. So again, the emotional needs are not being met because daddy is unavailable because he's mentally ill. Then we got the substance of Bruce's father, which actually could tie in there with the mentally ill a little bit as well. You got the father who's only hustling for himself. You know, he may make a dollar, but you're not going to get it because he's got to keep his smoke up. He's got to keep his habit up. And so, therefore, the family now beco becomes a non-priority in the father's life that is a substance abuse user. That means nobody. He He's not really trying to think about nobody. No woman or nothing. He just wants to get his fix. And the daughter suffers from this. Because she wants so desperately to be a part of his life. But he cannot see her as a priority. Because like with any addiction. The addiction is the priority. And therefore, he's going to miss basketball games. He's going to miss science projects. He's going to miss the prom. He's going to miss um, taking the child, you know, to the parks and playing and stuff. Because he's a substance abuse user, he will not have time to fully commit emotionally to that child, to his daughter. And so this girl, she usually looks for those rough guys. Those roughneck guys. I'm talking about the thugs. She wants to find her love through the thugs, but it's not going to happen. Even the thug is still going to be unemotionally available. Okay, the unreliable father. The unreliable father is the father who says, I'm going to make sure that you have your, um, I'm going to make sure that you get a computer before you start school. Before school starts, I'm going to go ahead and get it done for you. But this father does not come through. Because this father is unreliable. He is not mature enough to handle reliability. So this father, um, he's usually going to be the father that shows up late to everything. He's going to be the father that makes all these excuses. And you already know, you already got the excuses down pat. You already know him because he's been said them to you over and over since a child. And he ain't even changed now that you're older. He's still the same dad. Unreliable. Mom can't count on him for nothing. You can't count on him for nothing. And what about stepmom? Stepmom can't count on him for nothing because he's unreliable. He's not going to change for anybody because that's his personality. That's his pattern of behavior is being unreliable. All right. And the fifth type of father is the abusive father who is emotionally unavailable. Now, this child, I tell you, Stockholm Syndrome. When I think about that, I think about Stockholm Syndrome. And y'all know what that is where, like, um, you think about it, Kamaya Mos Mobley. Okay, this is what this reminds me of. You remember the woman, she kidnapped her. At a baby. And she raised her all her life. Till she was up about 20 some years old. And so that's the only woman that Kamaya knew. And so what ended up happening was. She needed something. She was trying to get a job. And um, she needed her social security number. And that's how she found out that she was a kidnapped child. That that was not her real mother. That she stole her. And so they arrested the woman. 
did what they had to do with the woman. But at the same time, Kamaya was bonded to this woman. She was emotionally attached to this woman. She didn't want to see this woman go to prison for what she did. Because she was emotionally attached to her. She was bonded. She got that Stockholm Syndrome where... That was a form of abuse, taking her away from her parents, because now she doesn't know her parents, and she lied and manipulated herself, manipulated her by saying, I'm your mother, I'm taking care of you. So she was brainwashed, and because she was brainwashed for so long, even when she found out that this woman took her from her parents, she couldn't emotionally attach to her parents, because she was emotionally attached to the kidnapper. And that's how it is with some of these abusive fathers. Some of these abusive fathers have beat on their daughters as if they were their woman. Have um, slapped them, hit them in the head, kicked them, threw them down. Did all this bad stuff to them. Made them take medicine when they didn't need it. But because that's their daddy and because they got emotionally attached to them and they got trauma bonded, they got used to that trauma. They got used to that trauma. And so, even when daddy has been doing them wrong, they can't say no. They can't say no because they are trauma bonded to that abusive father. And that's what you call Stockholm Syndrome. And there are many of you ladies out there that have been abused, have been in so many domestic violence situations, and you don't leave it. You don't leave it. Some of you are still in those situations right now, and you don't leave it because you're bonded to that trauma. You're used to that pain. You have a high tolerance of pain now. I used to be one like that. I, I had a high tolerance of pain, so I put up with a lot. I put a lot for years, 15, 20 years of my life that, you know, got basically put on hold because I was steady thinking that, you know, a Bruce is love. But a bruise is not love, okay? It's not love. It's not love. It is what it is. It's a bruise. It's a brusive. We have abusive fathers out here. And because of that, those situations that went on when you were younger, now that's all you know. That's all you know is fussing and fighting. That's what you call love. That is your definition of love. Stealing from you. The guy you with stealing from you. Stealing your money. It comes from... That attachment, that insecure attachment, okay? And the last type is the absent father. The father who doesn't even show himself. Only time you see him is when he needs something or when he's going back and forth to child support, trying not to, trying to either get off child support or trying to get the payments down. The absent father cares nothing for the child. And the child knows it. The child knows that the absent father cares nothing for him. And, and sometimes the absent father does not even claim the child. Even though DNA says you're 99.9%, .9%, that father still does not claim that child. Does not believe. No way in the world this can be my child. Okay, so we got these six types of unavailable fathers. And, and these men... These fathers have caused you young ladies and older women to have insecure attachments. Because that's what it is. You're looking for that need. You're feeling lonely in that area of life. And, and you know what? The thing about it is loneliness comes when you set yourself up for it. And I, I used to lay here sometimes and I'd be like, oh, I'm lonely. And that's because I was busy looking out instead of appreciating what was in I don't think you heard me. I was busy looking out at other, other people's relationships, comparing myself to what others were doing, and, and comparing my works to what they were doing, and not paying attention to what God had given me within. And when we start to look in other places outside of God, we get into trouble, and loneliness is one of those troubles. And you know, that's why the Bible says um, that God said, I would never leave nor forsake you. And when he said that, he meant that, okay? So in your experience, you are not alone. There is healing at the altar for you. And you don't have to keep creating unhealthy relationships because of your past. 
And men do, and some men do go through and experience the same thing with women. They experience the same thing with women. So, when we want to heal and get out of this, when we want to break this pattern up, we want to break these repetitive actions of behavior up. How can we do it? You know, many of you women say, I keep getting this, I keep ending up with the same man, it seems like. Different man, but it's the same situations. I keep ending up, seem like I'm with the same person over and over. And you know why? Because you attract that same behavior type over and over. And you are the one that accepts it. Instead of you calling it out, you accept it for what it is. And you know, you think that you can fix them. No, that's not daddy. You can't fix them. You couldn't fix daddy. And you can't fix your man either that's like that. So you have to go back and do some healing on yourself. Listen to me, ladies, when I tell you. My relationship with my biological father, I did not really get to know him. I knew him many times before, but did not know that he was my biological dad, dad, until I was up in my upper, I say I was 19, going on my 20s. And, you know, I didn't have any connections emotionally with him. I didn't build any bonds with him when I was younger. And even when I got older, I saw him as a good friend. I would say, like, you're my best friend. I saw him as a good friend, but I never saw him as a father. I never saw him as a father, even though I knew he was my father, because that attachment wasn't there. I couldn't see him as a father. I could not call him daddy because he had not been there, and I didn't feel it. I didn't feel that. But some of you know your fathers. Some of you have been with your fathers, but your father still... You know, it was always seemed like something's missing in this relationship. Some of you walk on eggshells around your parents because of this. Some of your parents are deceased now. And because they are deceased, you know, you can't, you can't go back and fix anything. And so now you say, where am I at? How do I fix this? He's dead. How do I go and get questions, I mean, answers to my questions that I have to ask? I want to know, why wasn't you there for me? I want to know, why didn't you help me? I want to know why you didn't love me. I want to know why you didn't take me away from mama. She was abusive. You know, you have all these questions floating around on the inside of you. And the truth about it all, if you go back to the truth of things in which I'm, I'm a firm believer that the Bible tells us all the time, go back to that truth and analyze that truth and see what's in it that you're missing. And the truth of the thing is, you can't help who your father was. That is not your responsibility. So while you're blaming yourself somewhere on the inside for not being good enough, you're mad at the wrong person. Your daddy did that to you. You couldn't help what he did because you was a child. You had no idea you was going to be born into a world where your father was unemotionally available. You had no idea that your attachments to people were going to be messed up at birth. Listen now, this starts when you are a baby. It doesn't just start, you know, once you're in your teenage years and you realize, hey, there's something, something odd about me and daddy's relationship. We're not close or anything. He's there, I'm here, but... We're just not close. You know, this started at the time you was born. Your caregivers, who held you, all that stuff. How did they how did they come and get you? You know, like did when you did you cry a lot? You know, did you cry a lot? So you won't you know, that has a lot to do with it. Your attachment styles come in from at birth. And attachment styles are categorized as being either secure or insecure. With several subtypes of insecure attachment styles, including, check this out, anxious, preoccupied, and I'm reading this off in Healthline, y'all. People with this attachment type may be anxious, crave closeness, but feel insecure about their partner leaving them. Are you that type of woman who feel insecure you don't want your partner to leave you because you're anxious and you're preoccupied. 
You're craving that closeness. You want them near you all the time. The next type is dismissive avoidant. 